Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian and welcome back to Beginning C Sharp with Unity Screencast Series. In this episode, we're going to take a quick detour and discuss the importance of variable scope. This could have been included with the if statement, but the issue of scope is so important, it deserves its own screencast. Scope determines when you can use a variable. When a variable is in scope, this means you can access it to set or read its value. But when a variable is out of scope, that variable is unattainable. You'll get a compile error by trying to access it. Scope can be easily determined by the braces. Take for instance, this if statement. Notice that bot sword is contained in an if block. The braces denote the scope of the if block. Anything defined in those braces are accessible only to that scope. If you tried to change the variable out of scope, you'd get a compile error. This is because after the scope ends, the variable is discarded and you can no longer access it. If you want to access the Boolean variable, you need to place the variable outside of the if block like so. In this example, you set bot sword to false, and in the if block, you set it to true, and then you set it back to false. As a program, this doesn't make much sense, but it does demonstrate scope. In essence, scope works like this. Variables defined outside of a block are accessible inside that block, whereas variables defined inside the block are not accessible from the outside. Okay, in this demo, we're going to demonstrate scope. And to do that, I'm gonna create a new script. Now, as you can see, we're getting a bunch of different scripts here, and pretty soon we're gonna have uh, pretty much tons of scripts, and it's gonna be hard to organize or hard to find what we're looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the Create button here, and I'm gonna choose Folder, and this is in the Project Browser, and we'll call this Getting Started, and then I'll create the Create button again, and I'm gonna call this one Control Flow. This is a way we can organize our scripts. You can see here that Control Flow was created within the Getting Started. I can just simply drag that out. Now inside my Scripts folder, I'll move the Ternary into Control Flow, and I will move Guessing Game into Control Flow as well. And then finally, I'll select all these other scripts and move these into Getting Started. Now you can see here, we have our scripts organized. Now I'm gonna select Control Flow here and we'll create a new c -sharp script and I'll just call this Scope Test or Scope Demo. Okay, so here we are in the script and what we're going to do is create a variable and we're gonna call this is true, like so. And we're gonna say is true is true. Now I'm gonna create an if statement. And this if statement is just gonna check if is true is true. And in this case, we'll just simply print out the message is true. Okay, so here we have this very simple test and we're using is true. Now, what happens if we wanna access is true in say update? Well, if we try to copy this code, like so, you'll notice that we're gonna run into an error. And this error says, the name is true does not exist in the current context. So what is going on is that in this method here, it has no idea that is true even exists. So what happens is we'll have to take this and move it outside. Now you can see that error goes away and we can access it. Now let's say in is true if we create a random number. So we're gonna put int random number and we'll just create a range. So we're gonna call random.range. So what happens if we create 
All right, we'll set it one more time. Okay, so here we are in scope demo. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create on disable like we've always been doing. And with on disable, I'm gonna create a, a Boolean variable called is true and we'll set this to true. And now within an if statement, we're gonna say is true. We'll just simply print out a message. Nothing very original there. So here we have this, we set is true to true, and then we check if that's true, and if it is, we print out this message. Now what happens if I copy this, and I paste it in start? Well, you can see here we have the name is true does not exist in the current context. This is because once on disable finishes, this is true then is discarded. Now start has no reference to is true whatsoever. So if we want to access is true, we have to remove is true on disable out of out of it. And in later videos, you'll learn the implications of what this means to put a variable outside of is true and what kind of variable that is. But for now, you can see we create bool is true and now the error goes away. So what if in is true here, we create another variable and we'll call this random number. And we'll set this from one to 100. Now, I wanna print out this number, so we can just debug log the random number is, and we'll print it out. Now you can see here, as I'm typing, a red squiggle appears. That is an indication that something bad is going wrong, that there is an error. In this case, the name random number does not exist in this context. Well, can you guess why? It's because it's in this if block. And once this if block ends, this variable is no longer ex is accessible. It's discarded. So like before, if we want to actually access that, we can come above it and we can put is random number equals true here. Now you'll notice that there's another error when we do this. And what's going on is we declaring it here, but we're also redeclaring it right in here. So in some languages, you can do that. But in C sharp, it tries to protect you from this error because what's going on is that you're, you're obscuring the value of this number here, of this random number. To avoid that, you simply remove the int like so. So now you're referencing just the variable as opposed to redeclaring it. Now, if I switch back to Unity, here in Unity, I'm going to select my cube and I'm going to remove the player script. And I'm going to add the scope demo to it. And now we'll build and run or we'll just play our game. I'll open up the console and you can see it says is true. And if we disable this, you can see the random number is 89. That's it for this screencast, but as always, we like to leave you off with a challenge. In your challenge, I want you to create a new script and call it scope. Copy the code into your editor and fix it so that the code compiles and the console prints out 42. I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Okay, so here's the code. And as you can see, there's actually a few things wrong with it. First up here, we're declaring a variable called should proceed and we're setting that to true. And then you'll notice down here where we're, we're redeclaring it and we're setting this to false. So obviously this needs to go. Next, we enter should proceed and we're using additional value and we're setting this to six. And you'll notice that this has a green squiggle here. And this basically says the variable additional var the variable additional value is assigned, but its value is never used. So what we're trying to do is we're assigning this a value of six, but down here, 
we actually do the addition, but unfortunately it's out of scope. So we no longer have access to this. Well, we can fix this by copying it and pasting it above there and then setting the value to zero. Now that doesn't exactly fit solve the solution. We have to do is remove this int right there. And now we're creating this variable outside of the if block. So by assigning it a value, it's now in scope. Then we can do the addition here and it equals 42. Here I'm gonna select my cube. I'm gonna remove the scope demo and we'll just add scope on top of it like so. And we'll run, we'll turn on the console, we'll disable the cube and here we have 42 equals 42.